Hello everybody and welcome to the Cheryl Technology Channel. My name is Chris and I'm your host today. And in this one we are going to be looking at Container Station by QNAP, which is a, as you can see on the screen, is a box by QNAP. Now, the reason this video came about is people were asking for an advanced video. I'm going to be honest with you, there's no advanced video needed. This is so simple to run. I have a QNAP K3 running. But I know nothing about it, so I would have to learn Kubernetes from scratch. So I may do that at some point, but not today. That's not the point of this video. This video is going to be about the containers I have running, how to create one, how to get one running, and what it looks like when they are running. That's what I'm going to do. On the left side, everybody, if you don't know Jesus Christ, reach out to me in the comments, or if you need prayer for something, put that in the comments too. I will be more than happy to pray for you. On the left side, you can see overview, applications, containers, images, volumes. So we're going to start at the top. Overview shows is exactly what it says. Shows you an overview of everything that's going on. So you can see there's seven Docker images. I don't have any of these. These are LXD images, and we're not going to get into that. If you want a video on that, put it down in the comments. Um, overview, applications. This is where you create a YAML file. You get a YAML file, make a YAML file for the application, done and done and done, and then you can create it. And you would create it from a YAML code. See right here? And then it has a validate button. So you can do all that. Containers. These are the containers I have running. And what we're going to do is I'm going to just show you how to create one. You go to create. You literally type whatever you want to do. Now, Rocky Linux is the exception to this rule. Rocky Linux, it'll say... So a lot of what you'll see is Ubuntu colon latest and, and things like that. That's what CentOS colon latest. But Rocky Linux is different. It will not accept the latest command. You have to do Rocky colon and then the version. So eight or nine. You could do either one of those. But that's how you create it. Then you click. You literally click next and it does everything for you. It's freaking crazy. And that, that's what I love about this stuff is it's so easy. So we're going to look at the Unify. So that's how you get to the to the uh, thing. You'll go to the, you'll just click on the container, literally click on the container and click this, this IP and it brings you to the screen here. I can tell you I've been using this stuff now for about, I think a couple months I've had these containers running and they have run flawlessly. I mean lawlessly man they have had i've had zero issues no issues at all none they just work i don't know how else to tell you that they just work and so what i really like about this stuff is that it's all self-contained within your qnap box that you're using for storage video storage uh image storage stuff of that nature it's already got everything you need contained in there so it, you just literally click create type in this and click next and it does everything for you it's very easy now you have to do all the update commands. now don't get me wrong you have to do all that but that's how you create containers in this environment it's very easy now images now i want to tell you the difference between images and containers there is a big difference but they rely on each other to work properly now an image we're going to start with an image an image is a template think of it as a template so i'll tell you what we're going to go to docker hub and we're going to take a look at this so if we go to docker hub as you can see let's go to sign in i'm going to sign in real quick there we go go to docker hub that's docker home this is what i used to build my home my home assistant if we go to the image folder right here home assistant forward slash home dash assistant that is the one i used to do this I'm serious, man. It is so easy. You literally type in what you want, and it will go out, retrieve it. It uses the Docker pull command to pull the image in, and then you use the Docker run command to run the image as a container. It is so simple, y'all. So simple. And and I don't want you thinking that you can't do it because you can. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to actions. I'm going to remove these two because they're not being used. They're just taking up space. So let's get them out of there. And so that that's what I want y'all to understand is that this stuff is not difficult. It is very, very simple. When I first started Docker containers, I thought it was ridiculously difficult. I did. But after much working with it and after learning the things about it that I needed to know, like the pull command, the run commands, 
it was it became so easy after that and so that's that's where i think this is a good system so qnap is the manufacturer of the box itself they manufacture the box itself and then they create all the software they maintain it and they do a great job of that i mean they they have one of the best systems i think i've ever seen so that's where i can say with all honesty and surety that if you're looking for a NAS solution. That's what I would say, y'all. If you're looking for a setup for a NAS environment where you're wanting to run and experiment, this is what I would use. Either this or Docker Desktop. You could use something like that, too. And it's available for Mac. And then there's Podman Desktop. There's a lot of options. There really are. And so that's literally how you do it. It's that simple. Now, volumes, I want to look at volumes just a second. <clears throat> volumes are consider considered persistent storage, right? You have, think of it this way. Persistent storage is something that if you shut the machine down and bring it back, it's always there. And I have actually, in my network, I, I want to show you all something. Chasm is like a, this is what I, I like this because you can build persistent storage, right? You can build persistent storage for Chasm to where it will work with persistent storage. And so, like, let's say you're working with in an environment where you need, like, um, like you're experimenting with things. Chasm would be something good to do that with. Now, I've got it on a Raspberry Pi. I may need to reboot it. I don't know. Maybe it needs a reboot or something to get the web interface back up. But that's how that works, y'all. It's it's very simple. And I like I like this because it's very, very cool, man. You literally can hit play, stop, and there's a Docker stop command that'll stop the container from running. So all of that stuff uses like stop, run, pull commands. And it's just Docker at the front and then the command. It's so easy. You can actually run Windows desktops, although I would highly not recommend this. It's slower than hammered snot. Um, desktop use cases. I've used uh, OpenSUSE. OpenSUSE, however you want to say it. I have used OpenSUSE. I have used um, Fedora, Oracle, Rocky. I've used, well, not Oracle, Rocky, Ubuntu, Fedora. I've used all of those. And Chasm is a phenomenal, phenomenal thing. I love, I love Chasm. It's very good. Maybe someday I'll do a video on it. Anyway, everybody, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this. If you got any questions about this, put them down in the comments, and I will be more than happy to answer these questions for you. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, reach out to me in the comments. If you need prayer for something, put that down there too. I'll be more than happy to pray for you. And until next time, everybody, thank you for watching. Peace.